Why hello there, and welcome back to Let's Make Us a Character. So, people have been asking me, when are you going to do Pathfinder 2nd Edition? And the answer to that is, after I do 1st Edition, which is what I'm doing now. When Wizards of the Coast released 4th Edition and dropped all support for 3.5, Paizo, who had previously been publishing the Dungeon and Dragon magazines, decided that they would just continue to support 3rd Edition because it had a large, dedicated customer base that didn't want 4th Edition. So they created their own campaign setting, and eventually their own updated version of the game. And on a personal note, Pathfinder is also the game that I have the most experience playing, and have published several very odd supplements for. Link in the description. So let's make us a Pathfinder 1st Edition character. First, we generate six values by rolling 4d6 and discarding the lowest result, which we will then assign to our ability scores later. Our race options are now Dwarf, Elf, Gnome, Half-Elf, Half-Orc, Halfling, and Human. Each race gets plus two to two ability scores and minus two to another, except Humans and Half-Humans who get plus two to one ability score of the player's choosing. And our class options are Barbarian, Bard, Cleric, Druid, Fighter, Monk, Paladin, Ranger, Rogue, Sorcerer, and Wizard. Exactly the same race and class options as 3rd edition. So let's pull out the Advanced Player's Guide because, you know, we're all advanced players here. Which adds Alchemist, Cavalier, Inquisitor, Oracle, Summoner, and Witch. Also, alignment restrictions are still a thing, and looking at what we have done, it seems that we haven't let's made us a dwarf or a gnome yet, so let's go with gnome, and since we also haven't really done a spellcaster, witch. First, we assign the values we generated to our ability scores, apply our gnome racial modifiers of plus two charisma and constitution and minus two strength, and determine our modifiers. Our race also determines our size, which is small, and gives us a number of modifiers that I will mention when they come up, as well as determining our height, weight, age, and speed, and as long as we're here, plus one to initiative from our dexterity modifier. Being a gnome also gives us low light vision, a plus four bonus to armor class versus creatures with a giant subtype, several spell-like abilities usable once per day, and a plus one bonus to the difficulty class of our illusion spells, a plus one bonus to attack rolls against humanoids with a reptilian or goblinoid subtype, a plus two bonus to save versus illusions, and some other stuff that I'll get to when it comes up. We also begin speaking common, gnome, and sylvan, plus an additional number of languages equal to our intelligence modifier. Now moving on to Witch, our hit die is a d6, and we get the maximum value of that at first level, plus two from our constitution modifier, and favored classes now work differently. We get to choose a favored class, and I don't know, let's choose Witch. Every time we take a level in our favored class, we can choose either one additional hit point or one additional skill point, and let's take the hit point. Our class also sets our base Fortitude, Reflex, and Will saves, to which we add our Constitution, Dexterity, and Wisdom modifiers respectively to get our save modifiers. And also sets our base attack bonus, which at first level for us is zero. And that brings us to something that is new in Pathfinder. In place of a grapple modifier, characters now have a combat maneuver bonus, which applies to grappling, but also things like tripping and bull rushing, etc. And is calculated by adding our base attack bonus, strength modifier, and size modifier for a total of minus three. And for resisting said maneuvers, we have a combat maneuver defense, equal to 10 plus base attack bonus and strength, dexterity, and size modifiers, so eight. At first level, we get a patron from whom we get our witchy powers and doesn't really need to be defined beyond a loose theme. We also get a familiar, a magical animal friend, which is different from their non-magical counterparts in a variety of small ways that I honestly just don't feel like getting into. Familiars provide their master with some kind of bonus. In this case, our weasel familiar gives us a plus two bonus to reflex saves. As a witch, our familiar also holds our spells, like a furry spellbook. 
starting out with all of the level 0 spells, plus a number of level 1 spells equal to 3, plus our intelligence modifier. At first level, we get 3 level 0 spells per day, and 1 level 1 spell, plus an additional level 1 spell as a bonus from our high intelligence score. Witches need to prepare spells ahead of time, so whatever spells we prepare each day in our two level 1 spell slots are the only two spells we can use. However, our cantrips, level 0 spells, can be used unlimitedly, but we still need to choose which ones to prepare that day, and those are the only ones we have access to. The save DC, the number against which a target needs to roll to resist one of our spells, is equal to 10 plus our intelligence modifier, so 14 plus the level of the spell being cast. And now on to our main distinctive witch class feature, our hexes, which are supernatural abilities available only to witches. We gain one hex at first level, and let's take Evil Eye, which allows us to give a target a minus two penalty to one type of roll for a number of rounds equal to three plus our intelligence modifier. And the save DC for our hexes is equal to 10 plus one half our level plus our intelligence modifier. And now it is time for skills, the selection of which has been reduced somewhat from 3rd edition, mainly due to combining multiple very specific skills into more general ones. Witches get 2 plus their intelligence modifier skill points per level, so 6. Ranks in any skill cost only 1 point versus 3rd edition where non-class skills cost twice as much, and instead class skills now give an extra plus 3 bonus if you have ranks in that skill. We also get a plus two bonus to perception and a craft or profession skill of our choice for being a gnome, and a plus four bonus to stealth for being small. Then we add our ability modifiers to get our total skill modifiers. But now it's time for equipment, and as a witch we get 3d6 times 10, so 110 gold. We start with a free set of clothes, and let's get a light crossbow and 20 bolts, and since we can't wear any armor, just some adventuring essentials. And fortunately, most of our equipment weighs less than normal due to being made for a small creature, which is good because we are still pretty close to our 15 pound light load capacity. And now that we have our equipment, we can calculate our combat stats. Since we have no armor, our armor class is just 10 plus 1 for dexterity and 1 for size. With our touch AC being the same because we're not wearing armor and our flat footed AC only getting the size bonus. Our modifiers to attacks with our crossbow and ranged touch spells is plus two, one from our dex, and one from our size. And our modifier for melee touch attacks is minus one, minus two for strength, and plus one for size. And finally, we get one feet, and we are going to take rapid reload, because that's the only way to make a crossbow useful. And this character is done. Now, normally this is the part of the video where we level up the character, but... This time, we're not, because witches, like wizards, don't really get new stuff as they level up, just more of the stuff they got at first level. So base attack and save bonus increases, more hit points and skill points, more spells per day, and two new spells added to our familiar at each level. Every even level, the saves for our no magic and hexes go up from our half level increasing. We get a new hex and a bonus spell based on our patron's theme but no bonus spell at level 20 for some reason. At every odd level, we get a feat, and at every fourth level, we get a plus one bonus to one of our ability scores. Also, our familiar level's up, but as stated earlier, that's a whole thing I don't want to get into. And just for the sake of example, here is the character at level five. And that is a Pathfinder 1st Edition character, really just a slightly updated Dungeons & Dragons 3rd Edition character, and while they fixed some of the issues with 3.5, they also kept a lot of them just because that was the game that people wanted. I have no idea what they did or did not change in 2nd edition, but I guess now I have to find out, so stay tuned for that, and thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe, etc. And if there are any games you'd like to let's make us a character for, let me know about them in the comments. And until next time, keep on rolling.